activists and their offline activities. And it kind of matches what I found in the other questions. Um, 63% said no. And 10% uh, said they'd rather not say. I asked if they considered themselves to be activists in their offline activities. That was that question. Oh, and I think that 57% uh, was not about in-world relationships. It was about um, activities that their avatars do that influenced offline primary relationships. So, um, you know, and, and I, I wish I had... Um, I, I could pull up the survey, but the, a couple of the, most of the comments to that question um, were about affecting their marriages or their jobs. That was an interesting one. And then, um, and then the activist and offline um, activities, no, 60, 64% said no, 10% uh, would rather not say, and then the other ones um, it was yes, but a lot of them did not want to describe what those activities were. And then um, I asked if their avatar engaged in act activist activities. And at this point, the I, and I did describe this in the uh, survey, you know, not so much with like Relay for Life or not charity so much as activism. Some activism where we're talking about human rights and environmental causes, social justice, that sort of thing. Um, and 68% do not do that. Um, should I type now, Beth, do you think? Do you want me to type or is this fine? That would be great if you could. If okay. Scott or Brent comes back. Um, let's see. And I asked if people engaged in act, uh, activist activities prior to joining Second Life, and the answer was no. And then, but what was interesting, I wish I had asked this a little differently as well, but in the responses, um, they said uh, that they, you know, they were more likely to do act activist activities in Second Life than in their and their offline lives. Okay, and then my next question, this was interesting too. Um, in what ways has the anonymity of any of your avatars affected your second life behavior? That was good. 54% uh, have explored different parts of their personality that they would not have done offline. Um, oh, and 55% say they've become friends with people in Second Life that they normally wouldn't associate with. But that was interesting. And uh, people are able to do things in Second Life uh, that they can't do offline because of a physical handicap. So um, that's a good one. And uh, one was, I have shared intimate details about my life with people in Second Life that I would not share with people offline. 36%. That's that's a little higher than I in, that I thought than I anticipated. And 26%, 27% have portrayed a different gender. Uh, let's see. 11%, 12% have been a furry. 43% uh, have explored sexual relationships that they would not have offline. And uh, thirty-two percent role-play characters, uh, including uh, dominant, submissive, Borean, or others. Thirty-two percent, and twenty percent say that they have the appearance of making more money in Second Life. I thought that was interesting. Fifty-six percent are more confident in Second Life. That one didn't surprise me. Um, and. 12%, this number surprises me, 12% said they're less confident in Second Life than they are offline. Less confident. 
That one, that one definitely surprised me. And then, um, let's see. Uh, less likely to share intimate details about themselves. That was 20%. Okay, and then uh, the next question was, do you see your main avatar as an extension of yourself? And 83% say yes. That makes sense. Do you see your main avatar as a separate identity? And 74% uh, percent say no. Well, let's see. And this one is 50-50. Uh, do you feel that your avatar identity has affected your offline identity? And that's pretty much 50-50. Yes and no. That one surprises me. Because, you know, I, just as my own self goes, I, I would have assumed that, um, you know, most people, more than 50% would have said yes, it has affected their offline identity. Um, offline contacts that they associate with in Second Life, um, 80% say yes. That's interesting, I thought. And uh, people who have met Second Life contacts offline, 71% have met um, Second Life contacts. That's kind of cool. Um, and then there are the next few are about relationships. And 66% have dated someone. 45% um, have dated multiple people. And 70% have engaged in sexual activity uh, with someone that they're dating in Second Life. 50% have had multiple sexual partners in Second Life. 66% uh, have been partnered in Second Life. 35% have met offline with someone that they dated in Second Life. 10% have been paid Londons for sexual activity. And 30% have uh, engaged in anonymous sexual activity and then the, the rest of the numbers are pretty small 15% um, have never been involved in a relationship in Second Life so that's interesting and then I asked uh, how much of offline life do people share with people in Second Life 55% uh, tell their closest contacts a lot about their real lives, including their real life name and location. That one was interesting to me. That's the biggest, and then the rest are kind of split. Um, I think, let's see, only 3% don't tell people anything about their offline life. And just so you know, only 1% admit I don't know if it's true, but admit to telling people false stories about themselves and their offline lives. So, if these percentages are right, you can pretty much trust people. <laughs> um, then I asked if Second Life Contacts met you offline, would they say that you have the same personality as your avatar? And 88% said yes. So, I think that's pretty cool. I, I, that I, that I, especially because these are people, like I said, 79% of these people have been in for eight years or longer. So, you know, I think it, we reach a certain point where it is kind of like our, our offline lives. Um, let's see. Most people, 40, 41% of the people think that people are more dishonest when you don't know who they are. And only 28% think that people are more honest when they know that you don't know who they are. Does that make sense? I, um, and then it's doubtful that people are their true selves in Second Life. 30% believe that. And 
Uh, this was another one. It doesn't matter what the truth is about your offline life when you're in second life. 30% believe that's true. So that's, that's kind of interesting, I thought. And 21% believe that the avatar represents the true personality of the person. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, and now the next questions are about modifying the avatar. And do let me know if I'm going too fast. Um, okay, I asked if, do you feel that Second Life provides enough default options for avatar modifications. 70% of us think that, yeah, we're, we're all set with the options that we have. 30% um, say no. And do you feel that it's easy to modify your avatar? 83%, 84% say, yeah, it's easy enough to modify your avatar. So that was good. Um, and I asked does being able to modify your avatar affect your experience in Second Life? And 80% said yes. So, and that, that's telling to me because, you know, in my research I've been looking a lot at identity and how we form our identity both offline and in Second Life. And being able to modify our avatars um, is an important part, being able to modify ourselves, just like in our offline lives. So I was glad that one kind of uh, went through. And then as far as voice is concerned, 20, it's, it's uh, pretty much straight down the line. 28% um, say yes, they use it as much as they can. 27% uh, say they use voice only in private conversations. And 25% say they never use voice. So those are split pretty much. And then there's a rather not say and only in general chat, but those are less than 10%. So I thought that was interesting. And then um, perspective, you know, because that's another interesting part of the research that I'm doing for my, um, the way we, uh, the way we look, like when we're in first-person shooter games, we don't really see our avatars. And so I would assume that those avatars have less of an influence on our offline identity than those who use a third-person perspective. Most people, 72%, use the third-person view. And 30%, or no, I'm sorry, 20% switch between the two views so um, I think that's to me that's telling that's gonna that's that's a good thing for my research because that lines up with what I thought and then um, oh the preferred third-party viewer firestorm by a landslide very few use now I, I I this was one where they had to fill in the blank so I don't I and I haven't um, aggregated these yet but um, just looking through the responses, I, if I had to take a guess, I would say at least 95% use Firestorm, and then second would be the Second Life viewer, and third would be Singularity. And then there were one or two other ones, but um, um, Firestorm by a large margin. And then I asked about the advanced user menus. And um, like 80%, is it 80%? Uh, 75% uh, use the advanced menus. And what I, you know, I was looking for that for the um, HCI, the human computer interaction, because, you know, if you're not using an advanced menu, um, then, you know, are you really getting the full benefits of? what the technology can do and how important it, you know, that sort of thing. So, and that'll be in my, uh, that'll be in my dissertation. And then, oh, and the rest of them are demographics. And uh, let's see, most people are between 45 and 54. That's 35%. Um, and then the next group is 23% are between 55 and 64. 
And then after that, they're all bunched here around between 35 and 64, but 22%, uh, 35 to 44. So let's see, that's, let me see if I can get my math going here. <laughs> um, 20, 40, 70, that's what, 80%? 80% fall in that category. That's interesting. So 80% are between 35 and 64. And gender, for this survey, 71% were female. And 25% uh, male. And 3% transgender. And then 3% would rather not say. Uh, ethnic background, I wish I would have worded that differently, um, but, you know, I think most people figure it out, and I, you know, again, this was a fill in the blank, but going down through, most of us are white. Um, and let's see, um, marital status, 40% uh, are married. 26% are single, 13% partnered, and 3% widowed. Oh, and 14% divorced. Um, on this one, do you have a disability? 30% do, and 69% uh, say no, and then 3% would rather not say. And then the largest for the employed uh, employment status, 40% are employed full-time, eight part-time, and then the next one, uh, uh, 11% are retired, and 13% uh, are on disability. Uh, let's see. Annual household income, the largest one is, well, the largest one would rather not say. <laughs> um, and then after that is 21 to 40,000 is next. Educational background, most people have a bachelor's degree. I, oh, no, it's neck and neck, some college. And, and some uh, bachelor's, 23% have some college and 23% have a bachelor's degree. 7% uh, have a PhD and 16% have a master's. And that's, that's it. That's all of the information. I can't wait until I can share some of these comments because the comments have been absolutely incredible. I, I'm just blown away. And then I'm, I'm learning so much from the interviews too, because I've been doing uh, interviews with activists in particular. Uh, so yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's really, really interesting. No, I haven't. I haven't. I'm going to write that down though. So I don't forget Phillips design. I did see the one that was done, um, Nikki and uh, somebody else, I can't remember who did it, um, Quant Quantic Foundry. Oh, wow, that's, that's really interesting. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see that. I'll have to... I'll have to find that one. That's a good one. Yeah, that would be really interesting. I wish I could do this over and over and over again. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, and I probably will because I'm. This is uh, I'm staying in this industry. I'm definitely um, going to be working in in virtual technology for sure. Wow, that's great. That's so interesting.
And please do, I would love to get a really diverse um, response. So please do feel free to share it and anything I can do, um, you know, to encourage it. I have a, I did do a poster, so I have posters and, you know, I'm, I'm going to, um, a couple of people have offered to put them up in, in various areas for me. So hopefully I'll get, and then I have uh, Breno. Uh, she she's been hawking it for me and I, I'm gonna see if I can get a couple of musicians and that sort of thing so oh excellent thank you sure okay I found it really good for reflection it was really interesting to think about the things that you were asking about and my responses to them yeah I, I heard that a lot that um, you know, I even, somebody even said that after doing the survey, they hadn't been in uh, Second Life for a while and decided after doing the survey to come back in. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's what I figured. I figured I'd mix some of those in there. You know, I didn't want people to feel like you know they had to type all of their answers it it was so hard to figure out how to how to design the survey i had so many different iterations that would be so wonderful I, I would I would love if you the more people the better I do hope that I have to uh, put out for the <laughs> um, next step up in survey monkey I uh, the plan I have I can have a, a thousand responses and I'm hoping that you guys make me spend some money and um, pay the 300 to get 3,000 responses I'm really hopeful about it. I got, um, I would love, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm uh, in the middle of a, a storm out in the middle of the ocean and a small sailboat reading a how to sail book because, you know, I, I've never done anything like this before, uh, but it's a good problem to have. So the more I get, especially those um, open-ended questions, because, you know, I have to go in and put them in categories and figure all of that out. And I need to do, um, you know, at the same time I'm doing this, I, I, I'm defending in December, so I'm writing my dissertation at the same time. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's a lot, but it's so exciting. It's just, it's just very exciting. And I do want to do quality research. I really want this to be um, a good a good research for all of us. I mean, I, I think it's important, you know, for so many years, Second Life has been, you know, I, I, and during my research, I see, well, Second Life died in 2010, and, you know, um, it did not. <laughs> no, it didn't. Oh, I'm going to wrap up my, um, everything will be done as far as the survey and my interviews. Uh, by October 15th and then I'm crawling into a hole and all I'm going to be doing is writing, writing, writing. So um, Qualtrics, oh yeah, now I, you know, I, I was going to look into different ones and I found out my friend from Germany is here and she was telling me about a free one that she uses and, you know, but I, I have close to 400 responses. I, that I don't want to lose, so I'm just kind of um, I'm just kind of where I am, and and that's okay. We learn as we go, don't we? That's the thing. So you know, we just we learn as we go, and and I'll know for next time. I know. I I feel the same way because you know they they say that we died in 2010 or 2011, and. I, you know, and I think we're coming back because I think the goggles kind of, 
you know, everybody thought we were going to go that way for a while, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not convinced. But, you know, you put them on and I can't, I, I don't know about you guys, but I can't leave them on for more than 10, 15 minutes. And you can tell from how long people spend in here, we're not going to put those on. Besides that, one of the things that really appeals to me um, is I don't want to have to leave my offline identity to come into a virtual uh, environment. I don't. I like... Like right now, I like being able, I can see my cat, I can see, you know, when my son's here, I can interact with him, and I, I don't have to remove something and have this thing on my face that gets all sweaty, and uh, somebody else, you know, had to, uh, can't wear glasses with it, you know, with with a lot of them, so I, I can't wait for the next iteration, I'm excited for that, but I don't think the goggles are it, I don't think that's it. So I, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to come back to Second Life, especially with the changes that they're making when they go on the cloud. You know, if that could that could turn into something that could really bump up the um, you know bump up the population in Second Life again. Yeah, did you, uh, the movie Her, H-E-R, the game he played in there, I, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to just have it all kind of appear around me, <laughs> you know. I love that. No, I don't either, Helena. Yes, definitely. So I, I am going to um, post my dissertation, and I'll also do a thing with the results. And then I'm also going to, I'm going to have a big concert in January. I'm getting, I'm putting the band back together. <laughs> um, Four Bridges is coming back. I'm going to get a sim and, you know, really, uh, really go for it. We're going to set up a media place and go all the way through. So um, I'm going to do a big event. I hope everybody will come and get all my, all my, um, oh, I, the band thing is, you know, everybody says, we're going to get the band back together, man. Well, that's me. I'm going to put four bridges back together is what I mean. But I am going to call on all of my musicians. I have so many musicians, friends that worked with me uh, with Amnesty and Four Bridges and do a big concert and have some freebies and, you know, um, to say thank you to the community. So, yeah, if you get those links out there and the more people, the better. And if, you know, if I can do anything to make that easier for you, let me know. I do have a poster set up, so. And thank you all so much for coming and for your comments. I really appreciate it. I don't think Hello. so. I could look.